So I was actually in the squad uh, a couple of months before that, um, but I wasn't fit enough, you know, I, I was out of shape. I wasn't looking after myself, you know, drink was my priority, nothing else kind of mattered. Um, so me and my friends went over to support the girls, I suppose. We flew over the night, the day before. Um, I was drinking the whole day. Woke up the next day, continued to drink. Um, and I was on the train. I can remember having a bottle of wine on the train and trying to, you know, sneak it in to the, um, the stadium when we were in there and trying to hide it from everybody. And I was shouting and roaring. And, you know, there was parents of the girls that I would have known. Um, I was very friendly with a lot of girls in the team, as well as the... The, uh, the families that were over there that travelled over to support the girls. And I was sitting there, you know, extremely drunk, uh, supping on a bottle of wine. You know, I think that was kind of a moment that I looked back on and said, well, you know, it took me to some seriously, seriously dark places. Uh, very seriously dark places. Mm -hmm. you, you tried suicide twice. Yeah. Um, that's a... Yeah, that is a very dark place to go to. Mm -hmm. and did, did you see that as your answer to your problem? The, the, that was your solution? Of course, it isn't. Yeah. But is that what you saw? Definitely, yeah. You know, when you're in that suicidal state, you know, you don't actually want to die. You just want everything that's going on to stop. Um, and I felt like I didn't want to open up exactly how I was feeling. I felt like I was going to be judged, especially with, you know, my achievements, you know, I was an international footballer. Um, I had played previously just the year before in the Champions League and then all of a sudden I was this, you know, out and out drunk. Um, and it was something that, you know, I was really embarrassed about. I didn't know how to control it. I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know what way to, to go about it. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, I had, it had been on my mind for quite some time before that. Um, and I was out one night in, in Cork City and it just completely took over. It was like an outer body experience. Um, that's probably the best way I could describe it. And, you know, I woke up then in hospital and my best friend Amanda was actually lying on the hospital bed and I was on the couch beside her and, you know, she had a full bag packed. Um, so, yeah, it just took me, you know, it wasn't just me in these situations either. It was my friends, my family that had to go through it as well. And it's not... It's only now that you kind of look back and you say, wow, like, how did I like, put everybody through these situations? Um, you know, I'm not a monster. I was just living with this thing that was just really, really powerful and I didn't know how to control it or handle it. Is that why you decided to write the book? To kind of share your story? And I suppose, I don't know, did you not see or hear that, that kind of support in your peer group or within the world of sport? Was that where you were like, okay, well, I have this voice and I have this experience. This is why I need to put pen to paper. Yeah, I felt like my experience could help a lot of people. I feel like there's a lot of people out there that have these struggles that, you know, have no one to turn to. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly didn't have anyone really to turn to. Um, you know, I can remember being in hospital and, and being like, what can I look at? I've watched every TED Talk online. I've read so many articles and I was like, who is still playing football? that I can relate to. There's no one in the in the footballing world that has come out about their, you know, their drinking alcohol or their drugs and alcohol addiction while still playing. It's always when you're retired and, and things start to kind of overpower and over, over um, overtake your life, you know, when you don't have that kind of gap to, to keep you going. And I felt like, you know, I've been writing and journaling for nearly 10 years. If I could just put it all together with the help of Gareth, um, you know, he's been brilliant throughout this process as well. So he was able to structure it and put the um, the chapters and things together and, you know, it worked really well and I'm just really happy with how it, how it, how it came out. 